Hey everyone, I'm Raul Gonzalez. And I'm Oscar Ibieta. And we have a guest today by the name of Ernest Arredondo. Close enough. Close enough. Say, <laughs> say, say it the right way for me. Give me one. Ernest Arredondo. There you go. I feel like I said that's exactly <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I mess up sometimes. I, so. I don't speak Spanish. I'm the only one here today <laughs> that, that doesn't. So, uh, but. So Ernest is an agent, part of our agency, been with our, uh, how long have you been this is my with us? Third AEP. Third AEP. Full third year, basically. Okay, okay. You're, so uh, you're entering your third yes. AEP. Okay. Yes. Yep. And so we wanted to, to bring him on, talk a little bit about where, you know, what, what brought you here, what brought you into, into, into Medicare, uh, a little bit about your background, what you did even before you started, just cause you know, there's some, someone out there that might be listening that is thinking about doing Medicare and maybe just kind of trying to decide if they should take that leap or not, or, you know, so let's, let's go back a little bit in, um, what's your background? What, what did, you know, after, after high school, what, what was your background? So I've always, uh, kind of been in that sales, type of business. Uh, okay. One of my first bigger jobs was I started working with Gold's Gym, doing sales and doing personal training. And uh, I was a fitness manager, so. Selling personal uh, training? Selling personal training, selling on the membership side, uh, managing trainers, and then uh, just, I was there for about 10 years, kind of uh-huh. kind of working my way up through the ladder and uh, um, decided to venture out on my own. And um, somehow I got into, um, Started doing a little bit of uh, working for like a real estate, doing a selling mobile homes, worked for a, a custom home builder uh, okay. as well. So were you a real estate agent? Or so like I was re- planning on it and then got into the, the other side of it, you know, the builder side of it and uh, had my license, but I never really used it because I was on the builder side. So okay. yeah, I just, and had a buddy who did real estate, got into life insurance and uh, your buddy who did real estate started doing life insurance? Yeah, he switched over to the life insurance side. Nice, okay. Uh, so did that and then, you know, did that for about a year. I used to refer my, my Medicare clients out to a certain person I, y'all may know. Uh, <laughs> and he just, he told me, he said, why are you referring them out? Why don't you just get contracted and licensed and start doing it yourself? And said, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. And yeah, just. So you, doing Medicare. you only did life insurance for a year? Did it for about a year. Yeah, I did it for about a year. And you did it with FFL, right? Yes. yes. Okay. And uh, so you still do it now? You still do some yeah, life insurance? Yeah, I still insurance. do some life insurance when, you know, when, when it's the appropriate time. And uh, obviously with who we deal with now, I'm not dealing with a lot of, you know, quote unquote term products, uh, more final expense because you know, with, with the clientele base that we're dealing with, that's what they typically qualify for and what they're looking for. So when you were doing, when you were at FFL or, you know, as primarily with mm-hmm. them, you were focusing on term, on the term products then? Yeah, then? so when I first started, I did final expenses because it's typically the easiest to do. Final uh, expenses yeah, is the easiest to do. it's typically easier to, you know, how to present it, you know. Um, it's a little more simplified A little products. more simplified product, yeah, it's really easy. Like, here, this is what you qualify for. You know, this is how much it costs. Very you know, cool. okay. um, where on the term products, you know, you're getting a little bit more uh, financial background, trying to figure out the right term product for them. So, you know, it's a little bit more lucrative, uh, but you definitely need to know your products and how to present it. So, in life and, and final expense, you don't need to know as much. It's, there's not a lot to it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's not a lot to it. This is what you qualify for. You know, we had cheat, cheat, cheat sheets. Uh, so that way we can figure out which product was the best for them as, as far as what they're gonna qualify for. But that's basically what, what we went about was, this is what you qualify for, it's not what you want. You know, I, I would love to give you what you want, but it's not right. up to me, <laughs> you right, know? Right. So tell me, tell me about your start when you transitioned into, into doing life insurance and final expense of so this. You had a buddy who transitioned from real estate to life insurance, you mm-hmm. joined them. Um, what was it like? The, tell me about the first couple of months. You know, what, how did you get your start? Were you working events? Were you door knocking? Were you buying leads for, for your life insurance to get that off the ground, basically? Yeah, so, you know, through, through the agency that we were with, through FFL, it was a, a big focus on um, investing into leads and purchasing leads. You know, they had leads that you can buy. You can buy it from outside vendors. But uh, we knew kind of going in, you know, this is your business. Uh, you need to invest into it, you know, by either you have time or you have money. So, and when we say that is, is if, if you have time, you can purchase more inexpensive leads or you can, you know, Facebook ads, or you can do your own marketing. If you have money, you can invest into something that's gonna give you 
more immediate ROI. So yeah. what, uh, what type of, uh, like what kind of investments were you doing like on a weekly basis? On a weekly basis, you know, you know, depending on how many leads you can, you can really book, uh, you know, anywhere between five, 500 to about a thousand dollars a week. A week. A week. That you were spending on leads. On leads, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> how much yeah. you spend now? <laughs> very, very, very little. Okay. Very <laughs> little. And if I do, I get reimbursed for it. So. <laughs> right, right. So what, I, I love it. What was the, what was the kind of, so when, when you transitioned over to, to, to Medicare, you were going to just do it kind of on the side? Yeah, I was, you know, I was already doing a lot of final, so I had to kind of, take a step back because I was doing more mortgage protection is what they call the right. term products. That was how they market it. Um, I had to kind of take a step back and start doing more final expense uh, just because I was going to be dealing with that that clientele base. So that way I can, you know, like I said, if I meet somebody, maybe I can't help them on the final expense side. Hey, you know, I also do Medicare. If you need, if you have questions, uh, you know, here's my card, uh, just depending on, you know, um, this is all the products that I that I do offer. This is my portfolio. So, so for uh, those listening, before Ernest started doing Medicare, before he picked it up, he was referring to TMS. He, he was referring <laughs> to, to the agency that we have that we have here. And, and so more he specifically, send, Oscar. <laughs> he would, he would yeah, send I, don't, it I don't remember getting. Yeah. Any, <laughs> yeah. he'd, he'd send it over, and it, and it was always just kind of a little bit of a. It was a light joke. It's like, hey, why don't you? instead of referring it over to us, why don't you just get a, con why don't you get contracted and start doing, uh, start doing Medicare. And so I think after an AEP where he was running into people who were, where he thought he was going in to sell life insurance, were asking yeah. for Medicare. He said, I don't do that, but I have somebody who does. And they were, they would contact us and we'd be able to, to help them out. So after yeah. that, I think it, it finally just, you just decided you gave in and said, let's go ahead and right. start and doing I think, some Medicare. Like you said, it was it was definitely that eight, cause I started life at kind of the beginning of the year, beginning of COVID. And then at the end of the year, that's when I really, people were like, oh, I thought this was about Medicare. And that's where I was just like, okay, maybe. <laughs> and, and when I started life, I only had my life license. I had to go back and get my- Your life and health my license. My life and health license. Mm, okay. So I couldn't even sell it if I wanted to. Uh, but yeah, I was just like, okay, maybe I should get it. I'm, yeah. I'm running into a lot of people that, that uh, are asking, are about, asking Medicare. about it. Yeah. yeah. So it was just, it just made sense at that point. Yeah. Nice. So where, where was that transition period where you said, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start focusing on Medicare. Cause there's gotta be, there's, there's always that one spot, right? Where yeah. you're like, okay, i I'm going to start doing more Medicare than I am life insurance. Where did you hit that spot? Yeah. So uh, I think, so the first couple of months I, I got, got contracted at the beginning of the year in January. I was like, okay, my, my intent was continue doing final expense. And if I run into some Medicare sales or anything that where I can help somebody on the Medicare side, um, you know, just start adding it little by little. And then the goal was to eventually move away from final expense and do Medicare full time. But I was like, I don't have a book of business to just be able to, you still needed that income, I still needed that needed income. That. I still had right. bills to pay. So final expense life insurance provides, a little bit more instant income, right. but I knew I didn't want to do this long term because it was. It's a grind, it's right? It's a grind. <laughs> yeah. it, it is a grind. I mean, it, yeah. it's it's a grind. It's very lucrative, but it, it's a grind. And I don't know anybody that wants to do that long term as, a, as just only making sales. On so the even other side. guys that you've known, you, you knew that they wanted to do it. For, yeah, for I mean, a while. either there's either you transition to something else or you transition to open up an agency. And it's, I think that's why they're so difficult. big on on the multi level marketing, right? And, yeah, and, and, and it's very difficult. It's very difficult to you have to have a very pretty book, big amount of uh, agents to be able to be able to step away. Right. And I yeah. wasn't even near that, you know, yeah. so. So you knew that this, this that was gonna be the long, yeah. and you like kind of the, like the long-term yes. pay of a Medicare. Of, exactly, uh, yeah. I, you know, like, you know, we always talk about, we don't do it for the commission, right. not, especially when you compare it to life, but I knew that the long-term, just building that book of business was, was gonna be what I wanted to do, where I'd be able to, take, not have to work six days a week, not have to work late nights. Things That's like what that. you were doing before working yeah, six days a week? I, I was six days a week, one day of dialing, two days on the road, driving to Corpus once a week, driving to the Valley once a week, you know, wanna, depending on. I wanna share a, a quick story. I remember during the, the your first year of doing insurance. So this is 2020, right in the, the middle of the, of COVID. We had, or, you know, the, towards the end of the year in 2020, middle of AEP, 
um, Ernest is referring business over to us. And we ended up, we happened to be on the same part of town towards the end of the day. And so we met up and we had a drink, right? So we were hanging out and we were, we were, we were at a bar just having a, a quick drink before we called it a day. And that's when I really started to explain to you, hey, this is how how this business works. People get into this business because of the residuals and and that's, you know, I was I tried to paint a big picture for right. him and saying it's not all about the of course the upfront commissions aren't as huge, but we get into this business for the residual income. And I think it was then, like right after that AEP ended, you had reached out and you're like, hey, I'm gonna get my life and health license. I wanna add, you know, start adding <laughs> Medicare to everything that I'm doing. And that was your strategy. You continue to do final expense because that's what you needed to, to pay the bills, right. right? You needed that income, but you slowly started uh, adding uh, more Medicare sales to what you were doing. And then tell me about, so this is, so 2021 was your first AEP and you had already mm -hmm. added some sales to, to, your, to your book of business. Yeah, so it actually started a little sooner because like, like I said, January, February, when I got contract, I was still doing a lot of life. That was my main focus. And then I was like, I was already used to spending money on leads. So mm -hmm. I was okay. We got lucky. We had just started the new program with the brokerage about the reimbursement or the fast track. Right. So I was like, let me take full advantage of this. I just got contracted. Let me buy a whole bunch of leads because we're going to get, uh, they're going to, you know, match that. Match. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, this is a perfect situation. Let me. Let's try it out full time with Medicare where I can get some discounts on leads. And um, yeah, right around March, I did that. Like I said, I'm already used to the dialing, the mm -hmm. hustle. Said, all right, not going back to life insurance. It was a lot easier for me because you're not really having to. The thing with life insurance, obviously, you're collecting money. You're selling a you're premium. Selling a premium. Yeah. This is how much it costs. You have to convince them. With Medicare, something they need, they, they have to get. and you're only giving them more benefits, so. Yeah, here's here's a reality, right? With, when it comes to life insurance, uh, people don't really think about life insurance. It's, it's something that is after the fact because there's no immediate return on that policy, which we all know that the value of life insurance and everyone should have it, but with Medicare, this is their day to day. You know, people are thinking about their appointments that they've got next week and the prescriptions that they've got to fill and how much those prescriptions are going to cost. Uh, so there's more. It's a little bit more of a priority for the seniors, and I think that's the point yeah. that you're trying to make, right? Is just getting in front of them and just having the conversation, just educating them, saying, "Hey, look, these are the different options that you have. This is the way that I can help you save money on your prescriptions, lower your copays, get you more dental, whatever it is that you uncover in that needs analysis when you meet just, with them." You're just you trying to make their their life easier uh, outside of the outside of you know going to the doctors with the benefits you know with the dental and the vision and now all these plans have food cards and you know they didn't know that they can save money because they qualify because they have a chronic condition you know yeah. so all these things that they hear about on tv they didn't know that they could have got that they yeah. didn't know that they qualify for medicaid or they need help with their like you said their prescriptions so yeah it's all the day-to-day -day stuff you start finding like well i can help you with that let yeah. me help you where are you meeting them now as far as like, you like where are you meeting seniors? Where are you finding, like, where are you finding? I still, you're not I paying $500, $1,000 a week in leads <laughs> I still, anymore. I still do purchase uh, leads, direct mail leads, things like that. Uh, just because it's, it's, it's what I'm comfortable with. Right. It's easy, uh, at least for me. Um, but you know, obviously with the programs that we have and getting the reimbursement, I take full advantage of yeah. those for sure. Yeah. Uh, retail has been huge for me. When you say that, let, let's talk about that for a minute. So you, you sit, when we talk about retail, you know, everybody might call it something else, but setting up a table at a, a, a at a grocery store, that kind of thing. That's, that's what you're referring yeah, to. Walmart, HEB, okay. Walgreens. And so uh, you meet a lot of people there. You said yeah, it's been huge for you. It's been, I think, you know, it's been probably a, a big focus of what's been successful for me at least. Um, just because you're going to see a lot of people. You're going to see tons of opportunity. Sometimes you meet people that you weren't expecting to be on Medicare that just come up and have a question, yeah. uh, you know, because, you know, they are they were on disability. And I, I think those are the ones that they don't get all the information because it's not marketed to them. And then when they have a question, they're like, oh, you're the guy I need to talk to. Because yeah. I've been asked, I've been wondering what else do I get with this card? Right. You know, so, and then you just kind of go over the benefits and they're like, I get all that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get all that. Yeah. You get all that. So, so now it's kind of, you have more before, where before you're, 
your main, we, we and we recently talked about this, the, the stool, right? The, the four-legged yes. stool, uh, where before you leaned heavily on investing in leads, mm -hmm. and now you don't do as much. It's just one part of what you do, right. but the other parts are now, you've got the retail, right? Setting up setting up a table, getting in front of uh, seniors. You, you also do a good job of building relationships with providers. I know you've built some relationships with dentists. You, you, uh, you've you gone out, you're not afraid to, while you're on the road, and, and I recommend to everyone who's listening or watching this, Ernest, I think is a great example. When, when he's got appointments in a certain area, maybe an area that he's not super familiar with, his head is on a swivel. He's looking at different places. As he's driving from one appointment to the next, he's looking to see if there are any dental offices in the area. If there's a gym, maybe just a, a local gym that, that is in, in the network with Silver Sneakers or Renew Active, you're looking and, and he's making a stop. He's stopping by, he's he's dropping in to have a conversation. Uh, I'm already there, you know, <laughs> might as well, you know, especially if I have a cancellation or the appointment was quicker than expected takes five to 10 minutes just, you know, on the way out to, like you said, stop somewhere and worst case scenario, they say no or come back another day. Okay. I'll be back. You know, I'll, be back. I'll be back. It's not hurting your feelings yeah, when they say no, you. right? Yeah. 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 I think, you know, I've been in sales so long, you, you know, somebody tells you no, I'm okay with it. Yeah. You know, you're going to get a tons of but names, it's, so. I mean, it was probably something, I know I did, something mm -hmm. that you struggled with at, at first. Like, oh, of course, yeah. I would get in my feelings about it if somebody, yeah. is, so I started and with. I still do sometimes, <laughs> you know, I'm like, what did I miss? You yeah. know, where, you know, maybe I missed something. Did I not hey, say let's, something? Let's stop yeah. right there. I want to I want to talk about yeah. that because that is, to me, uh, it, one, a sign of a, a emotional intelligence, right? When, when instead of getting in your feelings, like, like Oscar. Like Oscar. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> but instead of doing that, I love the question that you're asking yourself. What did I do wrong? What, where did I, where did I miss? And if we use everything, I always tell people, don't look at things as a failure, look at it as a learning opportunity. Yeah. And to me, that is it, like that, you know, I see, I see a lot of success. I've seen you do it now for for three years, and and really make your way up to be one of the top producers that 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 in our agency. And so it, it's it's been really cool to see. But it's things like that, and those are the kind of things that we want to uncover, even in 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 podcasts like this. Is mm -hmm. is evaluating look like i like i know i'm not i'm not perfect and that's and that it, mm -hmm. it takes a, a there's a certain amount of self-awareness that has to happen and so i think that's awesome and i just wanted to highlight that for a minute so do you do that a lot do you find yourself like reevaluating how you said things replaying a conversation in your head like where did i go wrong or yeah definitely i mean we're never going to be perfect at anything right so it's one of those you know you just kind of the only way to get better is you know repetition right so um yeah if i Maybe there was something I said, maybe there was something I missed that I forget to mention, you know, a certain benefit or how we can help them. And did I forget to get a name and a number, you right. know? Right. Sometimes that's yeah. the biggest thing, right? But yeah, it's just, you know, just kind of reevaluate. And it doesn't have, you know, don't dwell on it or, yeah. you know, I'm not 30 minutes Why later, I'm like, Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't get, get in my feelings. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, five minutes, like, man, did was there something that I didn't say? So it's just five minutes just to, kind of recatch yourself, you know, kind of reevaluate. Do you do that after every appointment? Are you Not kind necessarily, of thinking? more so on the misses. Okay. You know, if maybe if, if I wasn't able to enroll them for whatever reason, if it was for something different, like it just wasn't the right time, I, I, there's nothing I can do. It's better for the client. I, I you know, on those, I don't re I don't worry about those too much. Those, all I can do is just, all right, I'll see you during annual enrollment period. You put them in the pipeline. I put them in the pipeline, mm -hmm. you know. Those I don't worry about too much. I did everything right. I'm doing right by the client and I'm not really worried about anything else. But, uh, you know, if there was something that I missed or why they didn't want to make a change and there was nothing stopping us from making that change, those, um, those I kind of reevaluate. Maybe I gave yeah. them too much information and we weren't able to really dig in to what their needs were. Yeah. Uh, so just, you know, every situation is different. You just kind of learn from the situation and kind of move on. There's a lesson in, Always. in each one. Yeah. yeah. And then more recently, uh, another piece. So, you know, you invest in some leads, you, you do some retail, you have your provider relationships. And then m more recently, you've started to see some referrals coming in from your from your book of business. And I think the, the referrals is uh, the most important, mm -hmm. in my opinion, because it, it it's 
it's your grade, right? If, if you're getting a referral, it means that you're doing a good job of taking care of your of your members, of your clients. And if you can do that, um, that means you're, you know, you're, you're the quality, the, the delivery, the, the service that you're bringing to the table, you're, you're coming through. So you're not a transactional person. You're, right. you like to build that relationship. You build that rapport with them and you, you really do turn it into a, a, a true relationship with your members. And so that leads to referrals. So that's four legs of your stool right there where before I you were about the, that were, part. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> where you were, where you were only depending on, you know, investing in leads, but now you have it coming in from so many different, um, so many different avenues mm-hmm. that, you know, it just, it's the snowball effect, right? And yep. it's just rolling down here and downhill and it's getting bigger and bigger. So um, I'm here to tell you that there's a lot more referrals that you're only in year three, man. Yeah. You're doing a great job. Um, you'll start to see a lot more referrals coming through. Uh, yeah, that's definitely something I've uh, I've seen more recently where, you know, I'm getting those referrals. Um, it's just like you said, as long as, there's a few times where we've sat down two hours later and with a the client, and they're like, nobody explained it to me like that. And I'm like, okay, well, at least I knew I did something yeah. right, you know? So, <laughs> uh, the and, and, then, and then the next week, all of a sudden I'm getting calls from that person, you know, f- from a friend, like, Hey, you helped yeah. out so-and-so. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> hey, I, one of the things that I've also noticed about you is, uh, so, so in our agency, we have, uh, we have like a group me that we use and where we just go around and, and make sure that, that if there's questions out there, that, that if, if one of us isn't available, that there's someone there to answer a question. And I've, I've noticed, and, and I noticed this even before with less experience than some, you have a lot of the questions. So I feel like you've kind of learned quickly. What did you do? Cause, I, Cause that's a big one for me is, you know, when you're a new agent, you know, we give, obviously we give training, mm. but there's so much more that happens after like right. an initial training. What did you do? What were your steps to, because I, I find that you, you, there's a couple agents out there that just kind of just know a little bit more than the average agent. Tell me a little bit about how you've gotten to that point. I think it's just, putting yourself in front of people, there's no better way to learn than to just put yourself out there. Cause you're right, we can go through all the training and we're not gonna be able to cover everything. Yeah. There's gonna be, and even sit, there's situations now that I'm like, three years later, it's like, yeah. hey, it is a new situation and you know, it just comes up. You know, That's what I always tell people, yeah. You're not gonna be able to cover <laughs> everything. So uh, I think just by, by by putting yourself in front of clients and you know, telling the truth, hey, if I don't know, hey, look, I work with a great, great agency, let me let me uh, make some calls. Let me uh, ask some questions, and I'll get back with you. Um, I think that's the best thing you can do is just be truthful. And because you and I tell them like, look, Medicare is always changing. I'm not going to know all the answers. Um, if there's something I don't know, we'll get that answer for you. Okay. Um, and that that's all you can really do. And I think that's the best way to learn is is through experience. But you got to put yourself in front of people. That's true. You you're in front of a lot of people. I guess that's <laughs> yeah. you picked up a lot. Of, you picked up a lot of situations. <laughs> yeah. Picked up a yeah, lot yeah. of weird <laughs> situations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so then at that point, you'll, you'll make the ask of, uh, of your agency leaders. And then if not, maybe the carriers also, if they're not available, or do you, do you contact carriers or is it mostly done through your agency? It's usually through our agency. Okay. Yeah. That's who I go to first. And if we can't get an answer there, then we go to the, cause I'm, I'm sure if, if I'm asking, somebody's probably gotten through that situation and, yeah. Yeah. and I could probably get a, a, a quicker answer from, from TMS than I could and from, from our, Humana yeah. or, you know, United Healthcare or somebody like that. So. so it's easier to just go through your upline for. Yeah, for a lot that's, of that. that's usually the first call on, or the text or, you know, group me. And, yeah. and then after that, if you know, and I've seen it in our group me, we're like, hey, let's confirm with Humana. Let's confirm with United Healthcare. Right. Let's get a, yeah. Just to make sure <laughs> yeah, that we're a, on the right. I, and I'm speaking to agency leaders. If you have an agency, one of the important things to do is if you don't know the answer, just like you mentioned yeah. earlier, be open and honest about that, right? Just, hey, look, I don't know. Let me double check. That, I just, I, we're, I'm only going to give you answers I know 100%. And if not, I'm going to I'm going to get you to the right person to be able. And I think that everyone should do that. Whether you're an agency owner, whether you're whether you're out in the field with uh, clients, I think that's a that's a big part. So, and then you're just a naturally helpful person, I guess, because you because you seem to answer a lot. A, a lot of questions in there. Yeah, it, I just think with everything I've started in personal training, it's I've always been in the service. Even before that, I was in the service industry, working at a restaurant. It's always yeah. 
any job, I think any job you do, it's it's a, it's service related. So I think if you just keep that mindset, sales is service related. You you know, especially with Medicare, right? right. So you know, as long as you keep that service related mind, and you're just trying to put them in the right right place, trying to put them in a better position, more so then you're gonna do okay. Is that a big part of what you do in, in a, in a, uh, with your clients is it's all about the service? Talk it's all about, about the that. service and putting them in a better position. If I can put you in a better position, great. If I can't, I'll walk away. How do you, do you, you know, it, and not to put you on the spot here, some agents are really good about calling back after they enroll them. Tell me about your after the, uh, after the enrollment, how much communication do you have in the first year? In the first year, I, especially, you know, and I tell my clients, uh, look, we're moving into a new plan. You're probably going to have a lot of questions initially, or if it's somebody that's new to Medicare, you know, just let them know, you know, I try to be more responsive to them initially, uh, trying to answer on the first phone call if possible, uh, just because they're going to have a lot more questions initially. And I'll tell them, look, as, as you start using the plan a little bit more, you start understanding the benefits, it'll become a little easier. And the the questions won't be as frequent, right. uh, but you know, obviously, you know, I'll give you a follow-up call a year during that enrollment period, things like that. But initially, the first couple of months, it's kind of checking in on them, making sure, you know, they're using your benefits or did you get your your cards, things like that. So, yeah. just kind of reminding them. I think the biggest one is just reminding them of their benefits. Call me yeah. if you need to find a dentist. Call me if you didn't get your card to purchase your over-the-counter items, things like that. Uh, really initially. And then like I said, after that, it gets a little easier for them. I think that's where a lot of the referrals come from, right? Because I think a lot of agents are out there and they sign someone up and then you don't hear from them again. And it's just like, might as well just done a, a, a telephonic enrollment with someone in right. in Wisconsin, right? <laughs> I always use Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Humana is based in, in, in Wisconsin. So I'm like, but might as well just do a telephonic enrollment if you're not going to be, you're not going to be there for them, follow up, be able to answer the the local questions and, right. and and so that's I think that where you can really add value uh, is by being there and, and staying in contact with and people. And I think, like you said, I, th I think the biggest thing too is just you know also kind of you know adding that little extra step for yourself. You know when you're doing this follow up, use it as a tool to like, hey, if you have any friends or family that need help, please give them my card. Yeah. You know, give them my information, have them call me. You got to give them a reason to choose you, right? Right. Because they yes. can go and get the exact same plan and coverage through the phone, just like just yeah. like Raul said, or they can go with any other agent. So for those who are listening, give them a reason to choose you. Make, make promises and make sure that you deliver on those promises. Make sure you're answering your phone. Make sure you're you're answering their questions. I, you know, I, I take it very seriously. If, if a client ever calls me, I make sure that I call them back um, within 24 hours. I'm, I'm returning their call. Now weekends, it's a little bit different, right? right. But uh, but even then, you know, I'm, I'm making sure that I'm doing everything I can to, to return that call because if I don't return that call, when they're calling you, they need something. And if they're not, and if you're not the one returning their call, they're going to go somewhere else to find that answer. And that could lead to you losing that person. They're going to fall off your books. And remember why we get into this business it's for the residuals. You want to keep yeah. these people on the books. I got a. I, I called my my banker the other day, and uh, I was like, "By the way, talk to talk to your talk to your bank about getting a higher interest rate on your uh, on your savings account because it should be out there." I called mine, and on her voicemail, it said, "I'll get back to you within 24 to 48 hours." Man, I was so annoyed that she would say, "I'm like, I want to talk right now," and she's saying, "I'll call you back within 48 hours." Like, I think that if we can. We, 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 she can do better than that. And I think we can all do better than that, right? Like people want to talk, if they have a question, they want to reach out. So I appreciate how you say you try to answer the call. How do you do that though? Cause you're always in appointments. How you, how are you managing that? How are, how you said you want to try to answer, how, how do you do that if you're in the middle of an appointment? I mean, being honest with the people in front of you. I, and I think if they'll see that too, like, Hey, just let me answer this phone call real quick. It's, it's a client they'll appreciate that. Or it could be like, just let me text my client. I'm sorry, let me respond to my client real quick. Just being honest. Uh, Cause if they see that you're responsive, they're like, well, if he's responsive with them, he's, he's probably gonna be responsive me. with yeah. me. And it doesn't always have to be a phone call. It could be like, hey, texting, you know, seniors are more tech savvy text, especially with texting, it's a little easier, but right. um, quick little text. Hey, I'm in an appointment. Can I give you a call back here soon? 
I mean, it could be as simple as that. Sometimes I'm on my tablet and I'm texting them, you know, <laughs> as I'm on my tablets because it's connected to my phone, just letting them know, hey, I'll call you back. I, I got your message. I'll call you right back, you know. Nice, so, yeah. And, and, but like I said, just, you know, being honest with your clients too. I'm like, hey, I'm just responding to my client real quick. Just being, I think as long as you're honest, you're truthful, your, your clients will, even new appointments, new clients, new potential clients, they'll understand. Yeah, they'll no, understand that, that, you know, you have a lot on your plate sometimes. So, and of course they always like to call right when you're, I could be the only appointment for the day, but all my clients want to call me <laughs> in that one when appointment. I get to my appointment. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny, I've been, I've been doing this now 20 years. I just got an, an email from the state of Texas saying that you no longer have to do CE, which is really cool. All that to say- Cue the clapping uh, noise here. <laughs> yeah, all, all that to say, we're all learning uh, we're all learning still, because for me, I when I when I was active as an agent, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't pick up the phone in the middle of an appointment. I wouldn't. I, I would just okay. I'm here with you. You've got my undivided attention, and and I think there's some value in that. However, if I were if I were back to selling regularly, I think I would handle it that same way. I think that that's something that I can learn that I've learned even today. And another one of our top producing agents. Uh, does that as well. And so to me, I look at two top producing agents that I, that I know, and they're both doing that. That would make sense to me. It does send a message to the person that you're in front of, right? It, it sends a message to, uh, to, to the person that you're in front of that, Hey, um, I'm going to be there for you the same way that I'm there for this individual. Right. So mm -hmm. I think that's great. Um, I just want to real quick run around for any, uh, any kind of last minute, Oscar, we'll start with you. If there's any kind of uh, thoughts as we as we wrap it up. I think I just, I think this was great, you know, having you on and, and really just allowing agents who are out there who tune into the the podcast, uh, just to, to hear it from, from you, right? And what it is that you're doing when you're out in the field and what works for you. Uh, so I'm just, I, I think this was great, you know, as, as we get ready for AEP. Um, this is good. You know, I feel like there's always some value that you can take away from from each one. So our hope is that you were able to find some value in today's uh, podcast and our conversation with uh, with Ernest. And there's something that you can take from his strategy and, and add it to your uh, to your bag of tricks, if you will. Is there anything that you kind of took away from today? Any any thoughts that you had just last minute on the no, not necessarily. Just you know, I'm, I'm still growing. Yeah, you know, uh, you know. Kind of like Oscar said, you know, you know, I started with what's comfortable with me and little by, you know, every year added something, added another stool. Didn't even realize I had a fourth stool. So, uh, <laughs> you know, now it's a table. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, just, you know, adding something every year to, to make yourself more successful. And that's kind of my continuous goal is one of my, you know, I think I told you earlier in the year is uh, this past year, I, I wanted to focus on building more of those relationships yeah. with the dentist. So that way I'm not having to hustle and grind. You're not working as hard as, for I, it. Yeah, 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 I'm not working as hard. So uh, just want to continue doing that, continue growing. One, one last uh, question real quick. We're, we're a little bit over time, but I want to still, what's the one, bonus yeah, bonus time. What's the, what's the one thing that you wish you would have done different or that you would have done different for a brand new agent out there that's, that's listening, anything? Just wish I would have started sooner. That's it, right? <laughs> so get you're so, in here. Yeah, so he, so small, quick story. He told me about this years before. Uh, gave me the book. I don't know if he remembers. He gave me this is before it was internet based. He gave me the book to study for for to, to get the license, and I kind of just put it off. Yeah. Never. I don't even know where that book is, by the way. Um, <laughs> you owe me. Just kind of put it off, and that that is my one regret is that I didn't start this sooner. Right. Um, where I would be, I don't know yet, but uh, yeah, I just wish I would have started sooner. So, you know, if you're thinking about it, don't think about it. It's just time to do it, even if it's just part time. Right. Start. Start now. Yeah. Start now for sure. I think that's probably all. Everyone in Medicare, their their only regret is not starting sooner. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, hey, well, everyone, thanks so much for 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 listening. We hope to deliver this content on a regular basis. Do me a favor if if this in any way has helped you. Do, me, do us a favor, share it on your social media, share it uh, with friends via text. Anyone else you know who does Medicare, we'd love to be a part of everybody's success. So, until next time, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>